<laughs> Welcome to the return of the Elite Pro Podcast. I'm taking. Ow! Oh! Oh, you gotta lean up a little bit because the camera makes it look like you're. you're like Why are you so far away? <laughs> there. There you go. Ooh, there we go. <laughs> Don't worry. Look. I'm in here for the beer. Right. Damn, this yeah. is some huge beer. <laughs> Take and I'm Jake right. the Machine Davis. And I'm Leslie Leatherman. We are the Highwaymen and Griffin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. The long awaited return fell <laughs> off the tracks immediately. Uh, and almost immediately. It didn't take too long. Uh, you know what? We're, we're going to start by putting you on the spot, sir, because I'm tired of people asking me, where's Leslie Leatherman? Why isn't he on this show? We didn't make a big. Retirement announcement or anything? Well, you know, I never made a big retirement announcement. I never really, you know, I talked, to, I had a conversation with you guys and stuff, but I'm just kind of. Well, you know, I mean, the thing is, the time comes where you have to just accept the fact that you're not a fine tuned athlete like, yeah. like me. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. It's true. I'll tell you, if you want to find out how long you can last in professional wrestling, we're chasing rats for a year. <laughs> Let that kid beat the shit out of you <laughs> for about a year straight, and then uh, you know, no, I, you know, I don't know. You never say never, but I mean, as far as I'm concerned, uh, it was it was a nice little. I, I feel like um, you know, a couple of years ago, I had a, a health incident, and I felt like I kind of got a nice little send off then, and I didn't. Shorty Smalls had announced a retirement and everything, and I just I didn't. I was not in a place where I wanted to officially say it. But I wanted to talk to you guys because I didn't want to continue to be an active part of things moving forward. And uh, so, I mean, like I said, you never say never, but sure. But anyway, I'm the important thing is we didn't tell him he's not on the shows anymore. <laughs> no, 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 yes, no. stop asking. <laughs> yeah. It's not our fault. <laughs> By asking, I mean uh, making accusations and harassing. <laughs> yeah. So people are busting you guys' balls okay. about this? For me, Constantly. For real. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, where's Leatherman? Yeah, I yeah. like the sound of that. It's like, hey, you guys. Oddly guys... enough, if I don't come home, my wife doesn't give a shit. It's <laughs> <laughs> kind of nice. It's kind of nice. Kind of nice. Kind of nice. I appreciate it. You know, there's somebody yeah. out there. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's a, that's a... <laughs> Thank you, fans. <laughs> <laughs> See, 20 years of effort. Oh, oh I know. Some longtime Elite Pro fans <laughs> came in. To the shop or something. I said, Are "You guys getting tickets to the show?" They went, "Pens, where the fuck's Leatherman? Why are you on the poster? He's not on the show. What do you got? Something better to do?" I was like, he, "He's he's stepping back for a while." I was like, "Well, you so didn't put him on the show, did you?" <laughs> like, no, I had nothing to do with it. Oh, fuck, it's only Robbie Page. Well, here's the thing. I mean, I have a pro little false advertising. Put my picture on the poster. So, <laughs> so I've got my tickets. I don't give a shit. <laughs> We'll put you on the spot before we dive into everything else. If this is your uh, the, the end of the road and you've rode off into the sunset of actively competing, what, would, what would you members. say is possibly the top match or two or three that you've had ever? Oh, uh, well, and the, then an elite too. Like, what's some of your favorite? Well, the, the biggest night ever was the the Flair, the Flair show and Flair and Funk and you and you and Gallows tearing the house down. You, you. Know, Doing, doing a lot of the leg work on having the biggest show in the history of this area coming in to town and so being in the ring with you know I, I had this picture in uh, my man cave of me swinging the chair at gallows you you were filming I think because you, your match was earlier so you're outside the ring Tim Walker's outside the ring you're dropping down and Terry Funk sitting there watching of course all the chaos of what you guys did was in the ring the barbed wire the chairs and the thumbtacks I mean it's to me, it's like the greatest. I mean, it's all of us guys there, you know. Well, it would been nice if Flair had been in that picture too, but there's a couple of those down there as well. But, um, I will say this: the the last the last year and working with Rad, it's somebody who I think is probably as talented as anybody. I was thinking about it earlier. It's the strongest guy I've ever been in the ring with, and that's saying a lot. I mean, nobody's ever picked me up and thrown me around like Raditz has. Really, an amazing technician can wrestle. And then he can do a springboard from the ring to the top rope and hit you with an elbow. I mean, the, he doesn't have a weakness. And like we did that anything goes match, and I thought, well, I'm gonna, you know, he wants to fuck with me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull out. You and I've been in hardcore matches with each other. 
destroyed each other. You and I have been in tons of them and everything. And he, I, he didn't have a weakness there. He was better at that than I was that. Than I was. <laughs> and I was like, you son of a bitch, you know? So, but when, when the match comes... my good thing. If I could take kayfabe out of it he's, uh, for just a second, he said to me in the back, because he was one of the guys whenever it was like that, I didn't say anything to him until the last man standing match was over. And all I, all I said was, uh, I said, you know, I, th I think that's probably it for me. And he said, he said, um, he said, don't you want to have like a, a big farewell, like a big, like going out with a bang type thing? And I said, you just gave me that, you know, because he did. He gave me that for the last year, getting to wrestle somebody that good and, and, and do some of the stuff that we did at my age and my weight and the health issues that I've had to get to have something. Fuck me, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't walk away at a better time. So if I don't ever wrestle again, I don't have a single regret about it. Well, and the, the cool thing about it was is that it, it lets everybody see exactly where you were because when you take all of everything you just described as rad ads, you went toe to toe with him for those matches. Oh yeah, it was a back in, where in you the, put in myself the, in the, over. Well, in, <laughs> in, the, in the later stages of your career and and the injuries and the you know ailments and whatnot. I mean, yeah, and, and the whole elite experience was just absolutely amazing, and it still continues to be. You know, I see the next looking at the posters, and we were talking a little bit earlier about you know some of the young. Folks that are coming up, because I mean, I know you guys. You guys have wrestled more matches than you've got left. I'm, I'm sure. You yeah, know what I mean? oh, for so, sure. But it's just it's it's kind of nice to whenever you've been a part of something, and and I know that you guys built this thing, but I feel like you know I've been a part of sure. uh, of the the momentum, and, and and it's nice to know you you don't have to be there. Right. For it to keep going because it's something special now. Everybody wants to be a part of it. Most of the guys in this area have reached out and want to be a part of it. The ladies too, and you know it's just it's it's you such know, a great it's such a great product. Something we were talking about the last time we did, the last time we did a show, I think it was in Mount Storm, was the idea that I always tend to think of this as kind of the tail end of the wrestling career, the whole elite thing. It's nine years in Jan June. It's almost half of the time that we've been doing sure. it. Sure, yeah, and, and I don't know that just hit me. I was like, wow, that's like almost half. It's, it's, I mean, and it's been incredible. And we've, we've brought some, I mean, think about Bodie Williams, the very first show we did. And he's a, he's a beast. Do you see that kid squat like 600 pounds yeah. like 30 <laughs> times the other day or something like that? And, and I mean, that's 30 like, times. it's ridiculous. It was like, well, we get over shoulders. You know? yeah, it, was <laughs> like, you know, it was it was like, it was insane. But he was in the very, in the very first match. And so, I mean, just some of these folks that have, that have come along and, and then to see somebody like Casey, who used to manage us, would come out, you know, and she had a couple matches, but she was so green and stuff. And then to watch her just walk into a building and take that building over, and you know, yeah. just just all and a lot of times steal the whole show from the, the show. from the entire locker room from everybody. And then you know, just just watching the young folks, and I mean, it's just it's it's cool. Yeah. It's cool. It's it's been just being a part of that has been special. And, and a lot of our friends have tried other leagues, and, and some of them. Have done well. Some of them haven't, and people that we know, nine years is a pretty damn good accomplishment, you know. And I saw the clips of that last show. I wasn't there. I was actually out of town. My nephew was having a football tournament, and I was out of town on that last that last show that you guys did when you and Reggie won the tag titles. That place was insane. I mean, that the fans were into it. They, it was a packed house. I mean, they were yeah. going, they were yeah. going nuts, you know. And uh, yeah, that Ricky Collins good. is over. I don't get it. <laughs> do Unfortunately get for it. him, he will be over this Saturday. <laughs> I hope so. I'll tell you, I fucking I am coming back. <laughs> <laughs> well, Reggie Collins has thrown out a, a, a challenge multiple times at the training center. Just generally speaking to everybody that may happen to be in there on a particular day that that Reggie Collins versus Leslie Leatherman's a match he needs to have before. You leave this early. He runs his mouth about it every day. You tell him to meet me at Paisano's for all you can eat wing buffet. <laughs> <laughs> and Leatherman will whip that ass. <laughs> but, yeah, you, know, he, he, you never know. I mean, that's something like, you know, down the road, who knows? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not saying never. Never say never. Especially right. in wrestling, you know, who knows? Vince might call me. It could happen. <laughs> <laughs> it could happen. It really could. We, again. He could call you again. Again, yeah, that's right. We have um, our show is Saturday. It's basically day after tomorrow. It's going to be at Frankfurt High School. Yeah, that's yeah Thursday. So, yeah, and that's a big one. R. L. Smith. Did you happen to see any of that? That's footage? fantastic. How awesome is that? Yeah, you know? it's the 
first guy to hold both singles titles in the Elite Pro Wrestling. Like Jason Rattles, as you mentioned earlier, the only other guy to hold two titles at the same time in, in Elite Pro, being the Cruiserweight and the Tag Team titles. But, I mean, to hold, he's basically the guy right now mm -hmm. yeah. in, in singles competition. It's crazy. So Saturday night, he's defending the Cruiserweight title against uh, Samson. And then he's been a heavyweight title against uh, Jason Rattles. That's amazing. Yeah, and then something he has to keep his his uh, uh, keep in the back of his mind uh, for the entire year is that Cisco, who we were talking about a little earlier, yeah. that awesome video you shared, he, he's the man. Uh, that he basically he won the uh, 2017 Ring Wars Rumble, and with that came a contract for a guaranteed title shot. So until he decides to cash that in, that has to be on the back of our and, 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 and I thought especially it was holding both titles because he can do it for either. At any time, so. And I thought it was, and I didn't, and I, I wasn't even thinking about that. I tell you what, I was thinking about was him having to defend the cruiserweight title, and I gave Raddick like I had to give up a championship match to get him to wrestle me. If you recall that, yeah, you remember yeah. that. So I didn't know if that was a Raditz ploy, like if he said, "Hey, I want to cash that." Obviously, Raditz is a number one contender in my eyes. You know, he doesn't yeah. need to cash that in to have a shot. But the timing, to the know timing that he of has it, I just thought. Earlier so, in the car. so I don't know if that's like I said. I just I've been so impressed with him. You know, I didn't know, man, is this a, a chess move? Say what? And another thing with R.L. Smith, I mean, he's a thicker cruiserweight. Yeah. And then obviously being a heavyweight champion, but you know, in the early days of Elite, we had the guys like like Robbie Page and like Brandon Scott and like Sanjay Dutt, who were the cruiserweight champions, pure cruiserweights. And then we got into this mode where guys like T.J. Sykes and Shane Malice and Jason Radatz and now R.L. Smith, those guys have have got to the point where they cut weight to make that weight yeah. class, so they're the big fish in that cruiserweight yeah. pond. Yeah. But by doing that, you're dehydrating yourself. You're you know it, it's yeah. got to take its toll on your durability. So when you have to defend the cruiserweight title earlier in the night, I mean, that's going to take a lot out of him, regardless of who the opponent is, because nobody in the league's, right. you know, a walk in the park. And then you have to turn right around and try to maintain some kind of a, a you know, a gas tank right. to go out there against arguably the top guy in the league pro that's not holding a championship right now in Jason Rath. I don't agree. And I, I think, first of all, I will say this. When I was the heavyweight champion, I did beat TJ Sykes when he was a cruiserweight champion, but he did not put his belt on the line. You know, apparently there so was theoretically you were also the cruiserweight. I'm just saying, you know, but apparently it had something to do with fat. <laughs> you know, but I was not. You know, but I, I was actually thinking about this the other day, and, and I'll, I'll just put this question out there to you guys because this is just something I'm curious about because you mentioned some names. I'll and I'll correct me if I'm wrong. Robbie Page, Arl Smith, Brandon Scott, and the potential for Jason Raddatz. But there's at least three guys who were cruiserweight champions that then went on to be the heavyweight champion yeah. with Robbie and Brandon Scott and, and now R.L. Smith. Right. Have you guys ever thought about taking that weight limit off of that cruiserweight and making it a secondary, like a U.S. championship type, intercontinental type, X division type? Is that, is that something that you've thought about doing? Or... I just think that enough guys have proven that they can yeah. cross over to. They don't it. need to use that as a crutch, uh, having a weight limit. So they don't exactly. have to yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm just curious what, what you guys have thought on that in elite. Well, one thing, um, I was talking to Travis Hanser yesterday, who's kind of our, our uh, producer in a lot of ways, and does some great jobs. Great and job. um, we're in the process of uh, doing, of setting up some TV tapings, and he's going to have the television studio stuff come in. And he had asked, he said, "Have you guys ever considered?" Introducing a television title, so yeah. it's only defended when you guys are taping TV. Yeah, and I, th I think that would be a great marriage. That belt with that opportunity. Yeah, that Which is that, so. the evolution of Lee. I mean, you never know what happens next. It's set kind of yeah. like the catchphrase, but at the same time, it's always proved to be you know come out yeah. and wash too. So, I, I mean, know. you know, I mean, I like I like the idea because the other side of that is is that there <laughs> there are some cruiserweights. Who probably are never going to be able to compete with some of the heavyweights. I mean, I think it, it, it takes a very talented person to be able to wrestle below that 220 or 230 sure. style and keep up with somebody that might be 180 but flying around that ring ridiculous, or going on and taking on somebody as as big as I was. And so I'm I'm probably right. the biggest elite pro champion that we've had. Heavyweight champion, size wise, weight wise, and stuff. Ego wise. Ego wise, and uh, but 
you know, not every so not everybody's and, and, Rey Mysterio. Right. So it's in <laughs> yeah. some ways I look at it like, okay, if if you make that if you just make it a true secondary title without any weight things, are you you know, are you not giving those some of those very, very talented people are you making a glass ceiling for them to where they can never achieve yeah. a title? Because that's that's what why we do it. You know, you do it to to be at the very top. If you're at the very top, you're going to get to be in the main events and on the posters and wrestle the, the name guys that come in and things like well, that. Well, a lot of it, too, that we've found out over the years is that it's kind of like what the fans want because a lot of times, you know, the league, us, everybody involved kind of reaches out to the fans and gets a perspective to see, you know, so maybe even and or a third Singles title. Yeah, well, I love the television title. I think yeah, that's that great. The tele- yeah. Because, you know, it's not going to be defended all the time because we won't always be doing the TV tapings. Yeah. But whenever they are done, it's a perfect opportunity. It gives everybody up and down the scale a chance at a, at a singles title. But then it yeah. also, you know, especially because these days you're seeing a lot more guys coming up that's starting fresh as cruiserweights. And yeah. then some of those guys end up surpassing that into the heavyweight division. But, you know... Like you said, that's a tough task, but you take a guy that's, you know, any one of the three of our size, and you take a, a guy that's fresh out of the gates of the training center in their first year of training or whatever, and they're trying to get on the right. roster. I mean, it's kind of tough to go in there against a 20-year vet that's 150 pounds heavier than you. It, it is, but then I look at somebody like Reggie, and I don't understand it was a tag team situation, but I mean, he's a, he's a pretty light guy. Yeah. He's, he's got, um, he's young, and he's got that tall, wiry frame. I think that he's somebody that's probably going to be able to handle 30, 40, 50 pounds as he matures, and gets thicker and thicker, and his body's yeah. going to carry that well. But he he's wearing a belt right now, and, I mean, he literally may be wearing a belt right now, walking around <laughs> with this fucking title on. I, I'm just kidding. They're on your shelf right here. <laughs> but, which is awesome. And, uh, and, uh, on a side note, Reggie Collins, the youngest champion in the history of the organization. In history, but but the, real, real quick, what I was just saying, you said about a 20-year vet. I mean, because... I mean, even Shorty Smalls, who I yeah. total respect for Shorty, and Deuce Don. In other words, here's a guy with that frame that I was talking about, but he won what is cons- is a, a no weight limit title, tag right. team title, that anybody from the yeah. smallest to the small to the biggest to the big could be that champion. Right. And, you know, he did that. So, I mean, yeah. that's pretty bad. Well, and he's, you know, I can say from firsthand experience, he takes it pretty seriously. When we won those belts, he clocked in that day. Legit at uh, 167, and as of two days ago, we're at the gym and he weighed 184. I mean, that's wow. just from November till now. He's just yeah. That's what youth will do for you too, though. Yeah, man, but, but, but there's passion there too. Yeah. So, yeah. Hey, real, back to the TV title. What, one of the things I used to love when remember like Georgia Championship Wrestling or TBS or whatever, when they would have that TV title, they would do that gimmick where like. Um, the television title would be on the line. Yeah, for like the 10 minutes. For, for 10 minutes. And, and they would do it one of two ways. It would either be, if you didn't beat the champion in 10 minutes, then the match ended in the draw. And and sometimes they would do it where the match would continue, but you could no longer win the yeah, belt. The belt so was so if you pin somebody in 12 minutes, and it was a great way to extend an angle. Sure. Uh, you know, yeah. whatever. <laughs> you know, as a contender, man, you know I, mean, I pinned him with, with 10, 15, 10 minutes and 15 seconds, so I'd just, you know. Yeah. So... If if this would come to fruition and you would do that, is that a concept you would think about, like putting the time limit on it? Because if you did do that, I think that that would still be something that you could introduce, like on live shows and stuff, even if it wasn't part oh, of that. Yeah. And say yeah. say this is a TV title match, but you know if he's not pinned in the first fifteen minutes or what or whatever you would deem, would, is that something? I know it's it's all hypothetical. Well, at this and point, it also. But, Put you in the position where it's an edge of your seat type scenario. Because oh, I love that. It, it's very a, few matches that you see on Elite Pro because of the caliber of guys up and down the card is less than ten minutes. Mm-hmm. So it's, I mean, the challengers got a task ahead yeah. of them to beat a champion yeah. in, in less than ten minutes. Yeah. Well, it's, I don't know if a title's ever changed hands in less than ten minutes. Well, you know, the cool thing about it is like like the the clock, the countdown. It's it's a great tool. It's a great tool, like in the Royal Rumble, yeah. where that clock down was yeah. come down. And I remember in the King of the Ring that the first King of the Ring that was like a pay per view thing was at ninety three, uh-huh. and I remember it was like because the first one you had to the first round you had to win in fifteen minutes, yeah. then it was a half an hour, and then the championship, and you would see like because they really the announcers I don't think they had the clock, 
but the announcers did a great job. I think Savage was one of them. He was great, like, you know, yeah. you've got to be going for pins here because you only got uh, 12 minutes, and, you know, and he would be, you know, doing doing this thing. Well, and it's great I, I would love for Iron Man yeah. matches, too. I would love, yes, exactly, an Iron yeah. Man matches. Michaels and, and Hart, that countdown yeah. run. I think that if you did do that concept, that would be a great thing to have, like, on a video Wall or something like that for all the fans to be able to see well, that that clock. Yeah. We did that for, down. We did that for a war game as we had a screen that did the countdown, uh-huh. the 10 second countdown, and then we also had the 30 minute countdown at the Armory and Kaiser when Flex and Alien wrestled a yeah, 30 yeah, minute yeah. Iron Man match. Now, did you guys? W- okay, because you could probably like get on a lot of the gyms and stuff. You could probably use the scoreboard. That's the thing that's, what we use. Yeah. Armory. Okay. All right. That would be that would be <laughs> ideal where you wouldn't have to count on you know yeah anything. But I, I do I just think it would add that. Great, great drama mm-hmm. to to yeah. the match, and I think it's a, a kind of an old school thing. So if you do do the TV title thing, just keep that in mind. I, you know, I think it'd be, yeah. I'd be well. Great and, and Travis brought it up yesterday. It wasn't even something that we talked about. He he just mentioned it. And I think one cool thing about our league in general, and when I say our, I mean everybody involved in it, is that I don't think any idea is ever dismissed just because it wasn't the. The front office idea, right? Well, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, and I, I see that, I see that at other places well, where it's too. like, man, it's you got know, a real open door policy. Sh- yeah, yeah, you want to, you don't want to hear an idea because it's not your it's own. It's not your own, and that's that's ridiculous. Well, and, and, and you know, unfortunately, you have a lot of guys that have a lot of good ideas, but they're not, they don't have the the gumption or the courage to step up and say because they know what the reaction is going to be. Yeah, and it's just kind of, you know, it, it sucks because it's hard to say how many cool things could have happened all right. over the place. Yeah. If you weren't, if you were more receptive, and at the same time, there's the opposite end of that, and people that have no business making decisions, getting to have the final say yeah. on how things right. go, and yeah. or people that really, really shouldn't have suggestions, <laughs> that have a bunch. That shouldn't of, be allowed to talk. <laughs> but you want you know, people that, 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 that really are in a position where they they should be comfortable <laughs> suggesting things tend to have more ideas than most. Yeah. I tell you what, though, I, I kind of equate it to, well, I, I love, my, you know, I, we've all been around children, you know, I mean, you, you've got kids, you've got kids, I don't have any children, but I have a nephew and stuff, and I love the fact that, like, um, he's one of those kids, like, in his classroom and stuff, his teacher's always talking about it, you know, he'll shoot his hand up and he'll, he'll take a chance, yeah. he'll, he'll throw his yeah. idea out, he'll throw his answer out, and he's not afraid to be wrong, and right. I think that you've got to... And, and you're right. There's some ridiculousness out there, but you know, I mean, I, I'd, ra- I'd rather. I mean, fuck, get one life. In. Take a chance. Walk out on a tightrope, man. Well, and, and, well, you know, and the thing is, it. is if you get an idea from somebody, and I don't want to name any names, TJ Sykes, but somebody pitches you an idea that's just silly and ridiculous. If they don't get that out of the, out there, then you can't say, well, this is why I think that's not good, and then they learn from that and come back with something. Better. And because some of those things is immediately let you know when you hear it come from someone's lips. That's definitely a direction I never want to go. So let me go ahead but, and put a pin in that way over here where I never have to look at and it. And then but, flush but there, it down the toilet. There, there, there is it is something cool like like explaining it, though, and saying, well, look, you know, this is... It's, and it might just be, well, look, that's, that's not our demographic. You know, yeah. this, this just yeah. might not work. Like, you know, he and I talked about... And, and I mean, I've bounced ideas. I mean, you know, I'll throw out... I'll, fuck, I love them. I think all my ideas are the best, but... But we talked. We talked about. Uh, we were talking about war games. So I said, "Man, it'd be awesome. We had some badass ladies in there." And he's like, yeah, "I don't know if I want. You know, do, do our fans want to watch a guy hitting a lady?" And right. then, you know, and, and I. And sometimes you just you get like, "Man, I just I didn't think about it like that." You and, know, I, and, I, and it's not. It's not. You know what I mean? It's yeah. just. And, and honestly, to well, me, it's not that Casey Carlisle could hold her against was, any dude on the yeah, roster. I, because I, I we're just bad. Tommy Dreamer gave her a pile driver. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 mean, it, I meant it as a compliment to our, to our ladies, to our, our women's division, <laughs> that I felt like these women were strong yeah. enough that they could do that. But you know, maybe it would be better to have a ladies' war games match or to do something like that or whatever. But uh, anyway, but that's just one example where you know where you're not always going to. And it was just like, yeah, you know, I mean, it's not that I don't think they couldn't kick ass. Obviously, they kick ass. We see it all the time. Right. But well, you know, and it's really not not something that's embraced by general society. But and it should. If be, anybody, you know. any elite fans wanted to know what that was like, set up an appointment to come to a training at the Elite Wrestling Alliance Training Center and watch the ladies try out with the guys and work out with the guys because there is no gap there. Right? Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, when you're no. watching, I mean, and, and cardio wise, the ladies. Can rival anybody on the roster. Yeah, I, I mean, I'll tell you, you know, Tess Valentine's ridiculous when it comes to the cardio, and 
I mean, I, I, I've been down the training center, more sparingly not, but she's one of the folks down there, like if a guy's got a new move he wants to try, she, she she'll, be, she'll, the she'll, she'll be the tackle the dog, yeah. you know, and I mean that as a complete compliment, because I mean, I just think that she is, uh, you know, she, she just loves being in the ring, you know, she trains every chance well, she Well, not gets. only because she's, she's athletic and she's a smaller person, so yeah. it's a little bit easier for them to practice a certain move or a certain technique, yeah. but... She's fearless. Yeah. I mean, you know, and everybody saw that in the last show of Mount Storm in that Falls County World with Danny DeVille. I was so mad. She got moonsault off the bleachers. She was like 15 or 20 feet in the air. I was so mad at her. Totally like, balls of the wall just like on the floor. It was crazy. <laughs> that car was like, come here. <laughs> like, Did you ever? It's like Tom Hanks from Lake of the Earth. You're still it's missing. It's like, the cutoff, man. It's like, I didn't talk to you. It was like, <coughs> don't you ever do that shit again. It's like, what the fuck, man? You know, you're jumping off, you know. God Almighty! I mean, and it was it was great. We're an it hour was, from the hospital. It was, it was, it was, it was like that. There's no cell service up here. I, I was just kind of like, she, you know, and God bless her. She was, you know, I was. Oh God, why would you do that? <laughs> it's like the old Sinbad comedy. Or let's go find your other eye. <laughs> <laughs> why would you do that shit? And especially, why would you do that shit before my match? <laughs> the fuck, man! I, I gotta go out and follow that shit. <laughs> Kill me. <laughs> Fucking climb it's up. It's okay, though. Climate's going up. No, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that anything goes? He's going to the top rope. I'm stopping at the second. <laughs> <laughs> I sure hope he remembered. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say three? <laughs> one of the matches I'm like the most keyed into and excited about. I just I've not seen Avery wrestle yet, but I have worked out with her and I think that she's And her very first match out of the gate her first match anywhere was at our last event at the year end event show and uh in a triple threat with Tess Valentine and Dane DeVille and it was it was an unbelievable match. Like it was as good a showing as you can imagine somebody having for their right. first match. And those are pretty deep waters and now they're deeper because yeah. I, I know I always put her over with Casey Carlisle, man. She's, you know, and now you got to go there. You know, and, and now, so you got Danny and Casey against Tess and Avery. And, of course, Tess has shown she can hold her own. Danny, I think, is obviously going to be, she's got title written all over her. She's eventually going to be that ladies' champion, I think, no doubt about it. Yeah. But it's just, it's, it's, it's a really good opportunity, first and foremost, for Avery to get in the ring with Casey Carlisle. Yeah. And now it's our first tag team match, I believe, yeah. Yeah. right, ever. And that's a completely different psychology, different pacing, a different cut the ring in half. I mean, because the nice thing about a wrestling match is, is if you've been in a match for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and you're getting tired, that other guy's getting tired too, except for rabbits. But everybody else <laughs> gets fucking tired. <laughs> but in a tag team match, if you find yourself on the wrong end of town, and you've been in there for 20 minutes, and they're in and out, and in and out, and in and out. You are screwed because yeah. you're getting, I mean, you and I have been, I mean, how many, well, we all, we've all done it, but you, know, you and I went up and down the road. They talk for, about cutting, cutting off the ring on an opponent. The worst thing in the world is when it gets cut off on you. But, and you're on that other and side, like and it's that, like, That you person know, might as well be on the horizon because it seems like it's miles and, away. And when your tank, it's, you can be the toughest son of a bitch in the world, man, but when your tank starts yeah. going down... I mean, what's it say? Exhaustion makes the cowards out of all of us. <laughs> and I mean, and that's that's the fact, man. You're just like, oh my god. You know? Yeah. Leatherman so, spent most of his career as Lambert the Sheepish Lion. <laughs> <laughs> well, that that exhaustion makes cowards out of all of us. That was me like walking to the ring last year. I was like, why is the ring so far away? I want like those WrestleMania carts. <laughs> like, Come on. You're like, it's fucking Frankfurt. I'm like, yeah, but, you know, come on. <laughs> Is that at the stadium? Uh, <laughs> I consider it a colostomy. Come on. <laughs> it's, I'm not getting up and moving anymore. <laughs> Another match on the card <laughs> we have coming up. Uh, Deuce Donatelli, who now uh, fresh off the breakup of uh, the Goodfellows with mm -hmm. Shorty Smalls retiring. 
is going to be uh, working with uh, wrestling Chris Gatton. Christopher Gatton, who's a legit MMA fighter, a legit tough guy. Yeah, have you guys caught any of his his fights? I have, and, and, he's, and he's a good guy too. I mean, not not guy. only is he is he well versed in technique of striking and everything in jiu jitsu, submission wrestling, but he's also very athletic. And usually in MMA, you don't see a lot of that athleticism. You can see kicks, things like that. But when it, you're talking about just the sheer athleticism, light on his feet. I mean, can do every cruiserweight move you can think of in the book. I mean, he's, he's very well-rounded as far as all that goes. Well, he's, he's not afraid to get the shit kicked out of him. No, it almost yeah. seems like he, he enjoys it in a weird way. He, yeah. was, he was in a triple threat match. I believe it was R.L. Dalton Hayes. In, yeah, yeah. Like cruiserweight time. Yeah. And, and it was fantastic. Yeah. And, and oh, I mean, Dalton Hayes and R.L. were trading the belt back and forth for a while. I mean, these are guys who had been champions, uh, you know, and... Gatton held his own with everyone. I mean, honestly, there were a couple times where I thought he was going to walk out with that title, you know, yeah. that match. I mean, he more than held his own. And I say that because R.L. is now our top dog in both divisions. So he's proven that he can hold his own yeah. with the top guy. Upper echelon guy. And, yeah. like, and, and if you throw a shitty guy in there like Dalton Hayes, he'll hold his own with everyone. <laughs> I'll tell you what, another thing you with Gatton, too, he kind of reminds me, like, his mentality in in the game is, is very similar to the Chael Sun. Uh, mentality because while he may not be as vocal and and you know charismatic and all this like spouting off, but if there's a booking, he'll take it. If he goes out there and gets his ass kicked in match two and somebody doesn't show for match six, he'll say, "Let me in there." Yeah. Like he doesn't, he'll yeah. wrestle everybody. If he loses, yeah. he'll turn right around and say, "When can I have my next match?" Or Cowboy Cerrone or somebody yeah, like that. I mean, it's like just, those, yeah. yeah, or even Michael Bisping, those type of guys. And it comes with that territory of fighting and being legit. Like he's all about. Let me in there and show you what I can do, and if I get my ass kicked, then let me show and, you again. And the yeah. fl the flip side of that is, is that he's taken on a guy who all of us have known. I mean, this is a House of Pain, a House of Pain original guy that started down there, and has been a part of a couple of big successful tag teams, mm -hmm. none bigger than the, than the Goodfellas. But you know, um, between doing Deuce Donatelli and Anthony Odyssey, has had a very successful singles career uh, as well. So it'll be interesting to see him step back into that singles role, Deuce. And I think that more now more than ever, he has something to prove in a big way. In the I sense think so. That he, they ran with the titles longer than any other team in, right. in the nine years we've done this. Yeah. And so he's been very much a tag team wrestler. And I think, especially when you're the champions, you have a guaranteed spot on that show. And those guys, even if before they were the champions, I mean, they, they draw yeah. and they're tough guys. Right. Now you have a scenario where he's a singles, he's a singles wrestler and... Both singles titles are occupied by one guy, so there's automatically one less free spot right. on the card. Sure. So I think that him facing Gatton, if he were to lose, I'm not saying he's not on the show anymore, but you can only have so many of those right. losses before you're yeah. you're not oh, in yeah. that mix. And, so. and for knowing Deuce in and out of the ring for almost 20 years now, I mean, he's he's that guy that I truly believe. Like as soon as you scoot the plate away from him a little bit, you'll get to see just how hungry he is. Right. Like, because he'll turn the dial up. Because when he was in Anthony Odyssey, he kind of, you know, he he had a few wins under his belt. He was kind of making a name for himself. But as soon as he made that flip back to the Goodfellas with yeah. Shorty Smalls, Shorty brought that killer instinct out because we all know Shorty has that to his right. core. Right. I don't know if there's any turning that off for Deuce now. Yeah. Like, I but think once it came on, and to, you're not going to be able to stop it. To, yeah. to your point, what he did, and correct me if I'm wrong, but when he debuted for Elite, uh, Napalm Bomb, debuted that night as well too and I remember just thinking you know because I, I think that might have been the only show that he did and he's a real explosive intense you know guy boom bam boom 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 and I think I was I was still commissioner at the time and I was at ringside watching it I said man Napalm you know, went out there and blew it up no pun intended and then here comes Anthony Odyssey out and I watched this match and I was like man it was every bit as good and it was just one of those things where I was like he didn't want another new guy Shitting on his debut, and he came out and he tore it down yeah. against a guy. Like, not they were against each other, but you know what I mean. Sure. It was like here's this new guy and here's this new guy. Yeah. And and when I watched Napalm, I was like, gosh, man, you know, I wouldn't want a debut. I wouldn't have to follow that debut. And he right. came out, man, he tore it up. Yeah. And and you know they're completely different styles. I mean, it's, sure. It, it would be like watching Warrior and Bret Hart. They both do different things, and they're both good at what they do, and different people like what they do. Right. But I really loved what he did that night. And I was like, man, I would, st I will remember that. I will remember that performance that he had that night. So, 
between him having his edge back now and and knowing that I've got to start doing it, you know, singles wise, he's in really good shape. You know, he got a lot. Of, he lost a lot of weight last year. I think he yeah. lost about twenty five or thirty pounds. Yeah, I'm interested to see where he goes with it. So he and Gatton, both two guys that know wins are important now. You right. got and, yeah. and and a good performance is even more important. Right. You know, so it's yeah. a great matchup. Well, and yeah. Gatton's proved over and over again. He like in the, in the cage, he doesn't mind spilling a little blood. Deuce has proved that dozens and dozens and probably hundreds yeah. of times in a pro wrestling ring. Yeah. He doesn't mind spilling blood either. So those guys will be you know to the nail, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. It, it'll be a great one. That's for sure. So speaking of the the that night when Deuce's debut and, and Napalm. That was the one and only time I've ever wrestled Shane Malice. It's, it's life's ironic, and isn't it? Saturday night, <laughs> there it comes. Shane Malice and myself, for the first time ever, will be on the same side of the fence. Yeah. In a tag team match. Now, for me personally, that night, and then you know, obviously leading into this match, I mean, Shane Malice. I'm kind of a mark for Shane Malice right as far as his 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 work rate, his mentality. We've gotten in a few in recent, probably in the last year or two. There's been a handful of times. In the locker rooms, before shows, after shows, whatever, and, and after parties and stuff, where we've got to sit down and actually exchange ideas and wrestling, and and where I think we, for every time we have something that we have completely different perspectives on or or uh, opinions, we think so much alike too. So it's, it's going to be interesting to see how we actually formulate as a team because I mean I've never been in a training center with him. We've never gone out there and sat there and tried to exchange ideas on hey, what are we going to do in this tag match? Like. We don't have the same chemistry that you and I had for 15 right. or 20 years. Like, where all we had to do was look across the ring, and I knew what yeah. you were going to do before you did it, and yeah. vice versa. Like, it was almost like I could say, hey, go over there and do this while I'm in the ring just from a look across the ring. Yeah. Whereas that chemistry, you never find out until you're in the heat of the moment. Well, if I were you, I probably wouldn't give this guy those insights. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, though. He's just sitting there going, oh, Yeah, he's oh, never oh, tagged oh, together before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? I was here for most of it, so. No, no, I meant no, 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 yeah, 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 no, 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 and, and the fact that it's, it, other than the one time that you and I worked at Goodfellas, um, I've never gone after the tag team titles, and going after him and Rezzy Collins, and he and I, other than the war games, almost four years ago to the day, he and I haven't been in the ring against each other since 07 in CPW. Yeah. I, well, yeah. I, 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 like, I like the matchup, and the reason I like the matchup is, it's not like you and Reggie Collins have wrestled together for 20 years. No. So, I mean, it's not like Reggie Collins has wrestled for 20 it's years. It's not like Reggie Collins has been alive for 20 well, years. And, and so what, what I'm saying is, obviously, there's a connection, there's a bond and all of that. Sure. We know that. But it's kind of, it's, when you're there's, at there's, his, there's an experience. His lack of experience. And there's, and there's, and there's, and there's lack of chemistry. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that there, and I do think, and like you and Reggie are, which I love these teams, but some of my favorite teams are the teams that are yin and yang. I mean, because you guys couldn't well, be more opposite. Well, what's fun to me, too, about this particular match, what I'm excited about, is the fact that we chased the Goodfellows for probably six or seven months. Yeah. I mean, it was just, you know, every step of the way, every time, you know, it, it all culminated there, and that was really, really cool. But there was a lot of things there that were kind of personal, and, you know, we, well, we, and, we had an, and, an animosity. And with this, there's no animosity. Well, well, that's well, you and Shorty for sure. Because yeah. 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 you and Shorty, I mean, that cage match, which it, I, to this day may be my favorite match of yours. Wow. Well, that's... You know, I mean, I just thought that it was just, it was a... a it was just an, an excellent It was one of those places matches. you went that not a lot of people, one, get the opportunity, but is willing to go. Yeah, and, and I just, there was, I don't, there were things that happened with the tape and the, ta there was, there was uh, some, you don't always see, you very rarely wrestling where you've seen something for the first time or something you haven't seen. Yeah, there sure. was just some very creative things that you guys did. And uh, so, I mean, I, you know, I, uh, anyway, but but there, you're right, there was a ton of heat. And this this match is lining up as just a true competition over over. We really want the belt, those belts. And uh, <laughs> you got another shell. You got a shell? <laughs> Are you gonna get a shell? Aren't you? you I, shell. I, I might take that shell. <laughs> I'll take the shell with the belt. <laughs> yes. You just show up the next day. Hey, Brad has some furniture. <laughs> <laughs> Brad has probably picks up whatever he wants. I thought I saw him move a car last show. Yeah. <laughs> But no, I think I think it's I think it's a great matchup. I, I'll tell you what. Just getting back to Malice, it was one of the Ridgely shows. It was PG thirteen against 
the wild cards. Was it yeah. PG-13? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it was Project, Project 13. 13. Project 13. I'm sorry. Project 13. Project 13 gets them, and originally at one of the, what were the originally shows called? The uh, Ring Wars. Ring Wars. And I remember, I was just sitting there watching that match, and I was like, these four guys are incredible. You know, and yeah. just the chemistry that they had. And I really just, I just really thought that that was a, you know, a great, great introduction to them. Not, not to cut you off, we're just going to take a quick break here. <laughs> <laughs> and we have returned. <laughs> All right. But as you were saying. <laughs> <laughs> it's been like four minutes. There's no way. Yeah. There's no way he remembers what he was saying. <laughs> Okay. So rabbits not torn down. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I don't know which one we say. But uh, all right. So let's get back. So we talked about the ladies' match. Oh, Anthony Adam. Yeah. Okay, Anthony Adam. Who he's got a match with? High Tide. High Tide. Bodie Williams. Williams. This to me is like a WrestleMania match. Like this is really like, like on our our shows. I I really believe these are two guys that like they're still on the upside. You know, they've not peaked yet. Sure. And they get better every time. They get more entertaining every time. Anthony Adam has really put a lot of time into his his work, his physique, his gimmick, everything about it. And, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, like, they used to call Sting the franchise. Like, I think Bodie's the franchise. You yeah. Know? I mean, yeah, you look at a former is. heavyweight champion, former tag team champion, former uh, Grand Prix tournament winner, the very first Grand Prix tournament winner. I mean, he is... He's been the standard for the, a long the, time. The well, standard for a long time. And, and from the, 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 from the, from the yeah. promoter's seat, he draws. He draws. Yeah. Like, there are less people there if he's not on the show. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And apparently, Leatherman's out there. Yeah. But, uh, a lot of people uh, bitch when Leatherman's not there. <laughs> they will actually call. If Bodie's not there, the girl's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I see Leatherman. But no, that match should be. I mean, I really do. It's very evenly matched. I mean, and Adam's consistently gotten bigger, stronger, faster. Yeah. Added new moves to his repertoire. I mean, he's throwing guys around pretty effortlessly. I just wrestled him on the year-end show back in November, and I mean, that was one of the toughest matches I've had in years. Yeah. Well, and and that's the other thing about him: wrestle Jake Davis, wrestle Abyss. You don't leave those matches without being better for them. Win or lose, you know what I mean? You, you know, you get an education in that ring. And I really believe that he is one of the guys. I'm a big mark for his. I think he's one of the guys that, like, I had a list of guys that I still wanted to work with. And, and Adam was one of the guys I still wanted to work with. When he's a guy that spreads right. wins and he's, he's all over the place. Yeah, he's won a couple championships yeah, other places. Yeah. And, I mean, he's, yeah. I, I see him popping up on posters and, and everything like that. So, and, and, you know, I can't say enough about Bodie. I said, I said that Raddatz was maybe the strongest guy I've been in a ring with. But, you know, Bodie would be in that conversation. I mean, yeah. it would be, you know, uh, when I'm, and when I say that, I'm not talking about, obviously, Barbarian's Barbarian. Gallows is Gallows, a Patriot's a Patriot. Well, I'm talking about a guy that got his hands on me and put me somewhere that I did not want to be put. You know what right. I mean? But I mean, I mean, picked me up and moved me. And I was like, holy shit, you know, this does not happen. You yeah. know, you know and, and truthfully, you know, I mean, Bodie's one of those guys. And so, uh you know, I, I think that this match right here, I mean, it's it's really, it's one of the matches I would be sitting there, like, it's a, it's a pick em, I think, in a sure. way. You know, Ellie, uh, Bodie's got more experience, so I'm sorry. <laughs> but Bodie's got more experience, and um, I think that he has a little bit more dimensions to his game yeah. with the high flying and well, everything like that. The thing with the like, experience, though, is when you look, especially in the, probably the last year and a half to two years, Adam's quickly catching up, I think. Right, you're, when you're right, talking right, about number right, of right, matches, right, yeah. I think, because you know, while Bodie is consistent daily in the gym, daily this and that, his his schedule is not as as volatile as as Adams is. I don't yeah, think definitely you know? not as intense. He's, I mean, every week, multiple days. I mean, he's out there on the yeah. road, yeah. and and Bodie's a draw. Yeah, like yeah. it's you know, it, it's almost like talking, and it's a completely different scale, but it's almost talking about like Hogan and Flair. Yeah, Flair may be doing 350 days a year, and and and, yeah. and, and Hogan the, may not be, but those guys are still both going to the top of the ladder. Yeah. And I mean, these guys are going to clash. And they, they've, I think they had a match maybe a year and a half ago. 
very evenly matched. These guys both have gone so much further since then. It's going to be interesting to see them collide and then collide as they're going up at yeah. the same time and just yeah. keep it, it, going it, at Another it. advantage that the game has, too, is, and I talked about like the, the quality of opponents. And I'm not saying Bodie hasn't wrestled great quality guys, but... He's wrestled me. Right, but when, you, when you're a heel and you're on the independents and the name guys come in, yeah. The name guys genuinely are baby faces. They come in sure. and they work as the baby faces. So when I when I look at Bodie Williams and he has wrestled everybody on our roster and stuff like that, but I don't believe he's worked a Patriot. Adam has. I don't believe he's worked a Miss. Adam has. Right. I don't believe he's worked Sanjay Dutt. Adam has. Right. You know, in, in, a, in a tag match and a handicap tag. So those experiences there of getting to work now. I know he's worked with Barb. I know they, he, that Bodie worked with, and with he Barb. South Sincere in a hell of a match. It's South Sincere. So. Well, I guess it, it's, it does all set, you know, but... There's, no, I there's, see your point. You it's know, a good point. It's, it's, you know, it, it's interesting to see what happened. And you know, it's something we've been trying to do. Um, I think we did it uh, at most of the shows last year, and that was have a preliminary match. Have something that kicks off about 10 minutes before the official bell time. So I'm assuming Dalt Mays and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, this time I think it's kind of an influx of new talent too that's coming in. And a lot of times you'll have the young, you know, some younger guys or some new guys. And this time it's kind of unique because you have guys that have been gone for quite a while and they're coming back. And it was neat uh, to not only have one team from the past, but actually have two. Oh, so it really is Dalton Hayes. It is Dalton Hayes. <laughs> <laughs> Dalton Hayes. <laughs> Dalton Hayes and Mike Madsen, the Appalachian Americans, are going to be wrestling against Ooh. Southern Justice in the tag match. Oh, okay. And I thought right, that, yeah, that yeah. looks pretty cool. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing that. I think so, too. I, I'll tell you what. That, and actually, those are pretty evenly matched. Teams. Well, it's funny because a lot of people, when Appalachian Americans showed up, I remember, uh, I remember Dalton Hayes saying, you know, at the time, I don't think he was familiar with Southern Justice. He goes, do you guys have a team named Southern Justice? Everybody keeps trying to say we're, like, trying to rip off Southern Justice. I'm like, well, first of all... Uh, the uh, whole Southern Cowboy tag team thing. <laughs> I don't think they invented that. <laughs> is it the Dudleys or is it Public Enemy? I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure. yeah the smoking guns, uh, the Southern pistols, yeah. <laughs> the Fonks. <laughs> anyway, I, I tell you, anyway, it should be a cool tag match. I, I love the form of the prelim matches because not only does it give people that may not yet be at the level of being a, a main match card guy, but it's letting them. Be in front of that same crowd. It's yeah. letting them get that taste of being out there and being in a locker room with all the guys that are. And, and so just, and, and we all know it from seeing it in the, in the past when we came up. I mean, just being in a locker room that right. has all the people that are where you want to be is the only way you're going to get where you want to go. Well, and, and the nice thing with these guys, too, is that, you know, they, they do have experience. I mean, obviously, a kid, Dalton Hayes, has been a champion, tore it down with Randy Scott, but it's a reintroduction of them in this tag team format. Well, Dalton of, of Hayes the, and Josh McMasters, when true mediocrity collide. Yeah. I, <laughs> I'll tell you, I'll tell you we, we were talking earlier about, about um, this is just a, a pop myself moment, but we were, we were talking earlier about he and I and tag team chemistry. And we worked, I believe it was at the Petersburg Fair, the first year we went up there, and we worked the Appalachian Americans in the ring. And uh, Jake started the match. And I was on, I was on the apron, and I believe that Madsen started the match, and Hayes was on the apron, and so they're circling each other in the ring. Jake and Madsen are, and as Jake gets around here to where Dalton Hayes is in this corner, Madsen gets around to where I'm at in this corner, and this was not planned. This was not. You can look this up on video if you think I'm bullshitting you, but. Right as he gets to Dalton Hayes and Madsen gets to me, we both reach out and slap the other one in the face. <laughs> and, like, I didn't even know that he did it, and he didn't know that I did it. And then we were watching the match back later on, because that's what we do. We're like, yeah, mark out for ourselves. <laughs> and so we were sitting there, we had a, we had a couple, uh, a couple, uh, should I steal the kids? Had a couple novels. And uh, steal the kids' gimmick. But, uh, and, and I was like, remind that. It's like I slapped him. He goes, "You slapped Chris, slapped him." And I was like, "Yes." We didn't even have to think about it. It's like it was just kind of like I'm gonna slap this fucking guy. And I was like, "I'm gonna slap this fucking guy." <laughs> and those fucking guys got slapped. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the truth. You gotta look it up. It's, it's badass. I'll, I'll tell you what though, because like I, I remember that got match. Slapped. <laughs> I remember that match. <clears throat> and I mean that was that was almost
almost the infancy of those guys attacking, and it was yeah. a, it was a solid match. I mean, it was a very good match. It was cold. It had sleeted that day. Yeah, I mean, it was very <laughs> cold. It was you know it was brutal. But... Yeah, the only thing worse than wrestling when it's a hundred degrees out is wrestling when it's like twenty eight. Yeah. Remember, you could hear the sleet hitting the tin oh roof. Oh my over. gosh, my <laughs> nipples were so hard. <laughs> Nobody needed to see that. No one. Nobody needed to hear about it either. <laughs> over now. <laughs> that shape's so bad. I think, I think the term the rest of us are looking for is, anyway. I remember one of those fuckers chopped me in my nipple. And I was like, I am fucking turning this kid around. <laughs> I reached out like, <laughs> fucking blast. And he, and he tried to cut me off and went, <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. You're gonna stay there for a minute. Fucking asshole. <laughs> well, it all happens this Saturday night at Frankfurt yes. High School. You can still reserve seats for the show. Call us at 301 697 1909 or where you're watching this, presumably watching this podcast, you can check us out at uh, facebook.com slash Elite Pro Universe or stop into the comic book store. Uh, that would be tomorrow's last day to actually pick up your tickets in person. Uh, but give us a call and come out and check out the show. Yeah, show. My understanding is we take credit awesome. cards now. Is that correct? We, we do. Yes. Nice. So we do take credit cards. Run that shit up. Yeah. Now we got so many other things going on that, around the wrestling community. I mean, yeah, yeah. something. Um, I'm going to cut you off there. Oh, go ahead. Something I wanted to, to point out uh, right off the the top. Uh, this is a really cool, uh, unique opportunity. I'm going to try not to get on the soapbox. Uh, I, Jake and I both have shared how annoying it is when you hear that buzzword passion people that don't really yeah. have passion like oh this is my passion bullshit so if you have passion maybe you want to consider um reaching out to our good friend shane shadows who's putting together one hell of a camp he has this camp that's going to be in winchester it's like a like a resort uh, where you get to stay in you stay in a cabin your lodging is winchester covered. virginia for you people yes. that are listening outside the area you get to stay for Four days and three nights, your lodging's taken care of, three meals a day for all four days, that's all taken care of, and you'll be training for four straight days with uh, Dr. Tom Pritchard, who I saw uh, with my own eyes on YouTube, I saw John Cena say he thought Tom Pritchard was one of, if not the best wrestling trainer that he'd ever worked with. I mean, to the very idea that you get to mix with that guy day and night, train with him, and pick his brain, and I don't know what the exact cost is, but I know for a fact that it's under four hundred dollars for the whole week. I mean, you you just yeah. can't beat that. A lot of seminars you get with guys, whether they're TV guys, whether they're veterans, whatever. I mean, you're you're probably looking at anywhere from whatever fifty to a hundred dollars for like two or three hours. Right. So you're talking about basically a, a an extended weekend or, or just shy of a full week. Yeah. And, and the yeah, thing is, your head dollars is anything, especially and, for a guy that is. And it's an opportunity to, to get to know the man too. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it's not. It's not just. It's a word of mouth. He's a, he's a pretty good reference. Yeah, <laughs> it's not just going to be all right. Ring time's over because I mean he's going to be there too. Right, so he's staying there. Know, he's staying there as well. Um, I mean, and, it's, I mean, it really is because I mean he can tell you what what gets the boys in trouble outside the ring. And, you know what I mean? It's just, sure. There's so, much, there's so much to well, learn. Well, know. like you say, you know, if you if you go to and just pick anybody, but if you go to a a, a seminar. Um, I know we drove up to Philadelphia. There was a seminar with Ultimo Dragon, and it was I did a, not go. It was a a uh, hundred dollars, and he was in the ring for ninety minutes. Which to me, I mean, he's a world one of the greatest of all time. That's a fair price. But in ninety minutes, if there's twenty five guys there, how much one on one time can you reasonably yeah. expect for a hundred dollars? This is a situation where, and please reach out to Shane Shadows or CPW Wrestling. Um, but I know for a fact this is under four hundred dollars. And you have four days. There's going to be those opportunities where you can pull him aside or he's pulling you aside. And you can have those conversations with him. And, and like, like uh, Leatherman said, get to know the guy. Um, the reason I, I stress it so much is I get so tired of hearing these guys talk about passion and um, you know not naming names or pointing anybody out. But there's a couple leagues like in, in Martinsburg. There was a league that last year had a 50-man a Royal Rumble. 50 guys can come to Martinsburg. Winchester's right up the road. I would I would tend to think some some of those guys, and I watch some of that stuff. A lot of guys could benefit from this. In fact, um, I don't know anybody that wouldn't benefit from this yeah. type of an opportunity. And because of of the nature of it, um, there needs to be some commitments early. So uh, what I would recommend is just reaching out, reaching out to Shane, and reach out to CPW. Um, I know it's a it's a minor deposit to reserve your spot. Uh, but it's it's a situation where if there, those reservations aren't made, it's hard to make a plan for that. Um, so, you know, the last thing in the world I'd want to see is this opportunity 
uh, fall by the wayside and the guys that really, really want it not get to take it because folks didn't step up and, and sign up and do what they needed to do. So, you know, again, um, and I'll, I'll include a link on this video, but reach out. That, that just to me is a huge opportunity. I know we're sharing it with all the guys at the, the, the training center. Yeah, absolutely. Because uh, it's, I just, I think for that kind of price, how can yeah, you, I mean, how can you it, turn it's it down? great. I mean, and there's a few other things like that. And for anybody that, that uses the P word, whenever they're talking about their perspective on wrestling, meaning passion, like right now there's a lot of that going around. There's, for whatever reason, there's this influx of, of seminars going on right now. I don't know if it's just all these organizations are getting, are smart enough and saying, we should probably get the best of the best to come in and, and let people show them what they know so they can get to that next level. There's an Arn Harrison seminar coming up. I know a handful of the elite guys are going to it, and guys yeah. and girls. Um, William oh, Regal's William doing Regal. one down in the Hagerstown area or, or, yeah. or Baltimore area. Um, you know, Dean Malenko's doing one that I think is closer to Florida. Yeah. I mean, there's a bunch of them that are going around in the, in the coming months. And while I would say jump on this Tom Pritchard one, there's there's so many avenues to talk to the people that are currently with WWE. And for yeah, everybody well, that absolutely. says, you know what, I want to be in WWE, that's my... Because that's what we usually ask everybody that ever signs up at the Elite Pro Wrestling Alliance. And that's all the veteran guys. But we, we say, what's your goals? Let's get an idea. Of right. what, what is it, what is your finish line? Where do you want to go? And every one of them say, I'd like to go to TNA, but I'd like to go to WWE as my last one. Okay, well, why not sell out a couple bucks and go tra be trained by a guy that trains in WWE? Right, exactly. You know exactly what the details are of how to be there, what you do when you're there, and what they tell people that are there right now. Absolutely. So you cannot learn any better than these people. Yeah. I mean, you know, you can learn the fundamentals at, at, at countless wrestling schools around the country. You, you know, you can have the, the fundamentals be driven into your mind in places like the Elite Wrestling Alliance Training Center. But it, the fact is, is that, you know, when you have those opportunities, either take them or stop lying to yourself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and really, more importantly to us. That's, that's, <laughs> that's really, it's that simple. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and, you know, the nice thing about it is, just, just uh, put this out there, kids, you know, this is unique to hear people talking like this. A lot of people that have their own organization, their own training centers, they do whatever, you know, they want you locked in strictly to them. And they don't want you going out and and taking these other opportunities. So I think that the fact that you guys are playing, I, I commend you for that. Because, I, mean, they're, 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 I mean, it was a situation I was in, you know. I mean, it was kind of like, well, this is this is where you learn, this is where you train, and you do not go outside these walls if you want to be a wrestler. Well, I'm sorry, I didn't want to wrestle just for one place. So right. I think for you guys to put over these other these other things, you know, it's it's nice that you're advertising. It's nice that you're mentioning it. It's nice that you're letting folks know about this opportunity. Well, and the, they should take advantage the of the grassroots of, of Elite Pro was originally was a training center, and that that's all it was. And 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 I never had any aspirations of there being events or being a part of events that was under that banner. And uh, and then, you know, it, it immediately evolved because things started to come together really well. and But, I mean, it was basically take everything that, that we collectively have learned that was good and bad and everywhere we've gone and all the different organizations and states and cities and towns and everything, promoters and, and whatnot, take all the good and then separate all the bad and keep that away from people and then bring them in and let them learn. It basically got them to bypass all the mistakes that we had to make. Right. So they could get a faster track, and that's why you're seeing people like Bodie and and all these guys and, and Vince Vega whenever he was before he got injured, and so many of those guys that that got to just skyrocket, you know, because they didn't have to deal with all the bullshit of of sifting through. Well, maybe I should try this, or maybe I should do that, or maybe I should say this, or maybe suggest that, or how should I train on this? You know, and you know, it, it's so invaluable to to be able to. Just go where you need to go and learn from the people you need to learn Absolutely. from. Absolutely. Right. Well, and the thing about it is is that you can never get enough perspectives. And, right. you know, you you show somebody the way you do something. I'll show somebody the way I do something. And then, what you and do then is, I'll show you the right way. And, and, because but, these guys. <laughs> but the, the truth is is that, is that you you got to find out who you are in this business or in anything. And, and you're not – you're going to take – and you're probably right. Like we were sitting here, you know, they probably take seventy percent from you, you know, fifteen percent from me. But you know what I'm saying, though. But 
you know, there's at least 15% of the bullshit that I say that probably will help you. <laughs> you know? You <laughs> know? Specifically so, hard. You know, you know? <laughs> but I mean, really, but I mean, on the other team, you say, man, I got this from Dr. Tom. I got this from Arn Anderson. I got this from yeah. Dean Lincoln. I got this from William Regal, you know? And just think that, like you just said, I mean, it's not always been like that. Those four guys. That, that's what I'm saying. That's yeah. yeah, yeah. And I wonder if part of that isn't the fact that I and I and I, I, I'm glad for it, but I think it's a it's an opportunity for guys that maybe have have and seen lady, the end of their in ring career. Yeah. Sure, yeah. but it's a it's a moment for them to have seen the end of their legendary in ring careers and still be very um, vital and and um, uh, to the business and still Passion. be able to well, offer. Yeah. Well, and, yeah. And, yeah. well, and and the thing about it is too is that you don't you don't want to see it become a lost art form. Yeah, right. But but you also want to see the integrity of what you spent your entire life doing being upheld, and I think yeah. that that's I think that's why but, they want to do it. And the very idea though that you think about it in the next, I think it's less than sixty days. You could basically have be in the ring with one on one opportunities to work with one half of the last incarnation of the Horsemen. I mean, did you ever think that would have been well, an opportunity? Yeah, I mean, you know, he's hard interest. Yeah. And and Dean Malenko, yeah. and and then um, and and again, you know, and, and those things, the William Regal thing, I just heard about the other day. But I go back to that, the Doctor Tom, uh, Tom Pritchard thing. I I just think that is just such a deal. I mean, if if they just said, oh, it's and again, it's local. Yeah. Like, I mean, Winchester's what fifty minutes down the road, an hour yeah. and ten if you're driving the speed limit. And most of Nerds. you, most of you that wrestle for us <laughs> or wrestle for the other leagues, whether. I mean, go down the list. It's CPW, it's WDWA, it's um, ATCW, and it's a uh, NWL. Um, that those are the, the 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 leagues that at least I'm aware of, and every one of those leagues are closer to Winchester than we are. Yeah. So you could technically go and then just go home that yeah. night. There's there's really no reason, and and the well, idea that well, you get. I'll tell you what, I wouldn't though. Oh I yeah, no, no, I would, no. I wouldn't. If I was going to immerse myself into this, I'd want, yeah, I'd yeah. want the experience. You know but, what I mean? Because that's, that's but if you're in a resort that has a lake, I mean, the cabins, yeah. and you're staying there, and you have three, um, you have three nights of lodging, and then you have meals for four days. That alone should cost you four hundred bucks. Yeah, but yeah. first you know, thing, that's first... without learning to be good at what you want to yeah. do. Yeah. yeah. First thing I would do, and this this might come off as a joke. But I'd ask Dr. Tom what kind of beer he liked. Because I'm telling you right now, you can pick his brain in the evening, sitting there bullshitting like we are right now, and learn more about the psychology of this business. Yeah. You could probably get twice the education that way as much as the physical stuff in the ring. You know? And also yeah. foster a relationship that maybe continues past the Exactly. You know, past so the I mean, week. That, that would be, yeah. you know, um, it might come off like a joke, but I don't mean it that way. No, I think it's a great and, point. Uh, you know, I mean, that's, that's what I would do. But you know. Yeah. And speaking of the NWO, my understanding is is that they've got some changes going on yeah. there, and that they're looking for. Yeah, for just something. recently, yeah. Don announced that uh, on social media that he was done promoting shows. That he was he was concentrating solely on the training center, uh, the Superior Pro Wrestling Training Center, and that uh, I think they're going to still do some of the training shows at the school, but that he wasn't doing the road shows, the the actual promoting. And so they're under new management, new and, guidance. Yeah. And Christine new Anders is uh, and taking over the NWL, yeah. and I believe she acquired it from from Dick Herikoff, and yeah. so she's she's solely running. Uh, is the promoter of of the yeah, NWL. Christine so, Anders. I mean, there's a, a great there's person, a complete though. changing of the guard there, and and you know, completely different management and staff and. Bookers and everything else. So I mean, yep. it, it, I'm very curious to see how how they pick up this year in 2018 and move forward. Because I mean, you're looking, and that's a, that's some deep shoes to fill. Because I mean, the organization started what 88, I think, 87, yeah. and well. you know, with with Neil and, and with Dick Herikoff at the helm of, of being the promoter. And I mean, so many years and every name you can think of through the the 80s, early 90s came in there. I mean. You know, in the, in the mid '90s, you had guys coming right off TV like like Mankind. Yeah, I mean Mick Foley's is, very, is on Raw, and then he's going and wrestling. My Fox understanding Stadium is John Rambo, Mick so. Foley's yeah. first championship was the NWL yeah. championship. That's yeah. my understanding. If I'm wrong about that, and I think wrestling it was the story, I think. Or but you're talking about you know Ivan Koloff held that title. Uh, obviously, John did. Neil Superior, uh, Jimmy Superfly, Fly Snuka, yeah. Leslie Leatherman. I mean, it's the greats. <laughs> <laughs> you know, held that title. And, I mean, you look know. at how many people came through there too. Oh, hey, Big Long King Kong Bundy oh, and gosh, yeah. I mean, you, you, George, George you, you can't even steel. Carry Von Eric, Ravishing Rock Rude, and Roll Express, Slaughter. Yeah. 
I mean, you know, we, uh, Ed really, Shrinker Samu, probably the coolest guy. One of the he and the Patriot may be the two two coolest guys, and I met both of those guys there at at yeah. the, at the uh, NWL. So, but but the reason I bring it up is you guys, it's 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 about opportunity. And if you have passion, I would, you know, there's nothing like ring time. Ring time is yeah. the most important thing in the world. And um, and as they're announcing dates, and as I mean, it's it's the same banner, but it's it's a new product, and to see. And from what my understanding, there's a lot of changing the guards and shifting around as far as the roster goes, as far as the management, everything going on. So, I mean, it's a different product. So, that's a ground floor to get into. Yeah, you know? I agree. Yeah. I mean, I agree. you know, you want to be a foundation of something that they're getting ready to build on. And, yeah, and yeah. if you can, I mean, that's... And and I and there are other leagues out there, and I, and I, wish, I wish none of them nothing but success, but being an NWL guy... Myself, I, I never want to see that defunct. You know what I mean? I, I want to. Yeah, it should see, always be there. I want to see it, you know, continue yeah. to thrive and everything like that. Right. And uh, I can't speak for anybody else, but if you were a part of that, especially a part of some of the really good stuff that happened there, which I would like to think that we were, you know, I don't think you should ever want that time to to be oh, gone. Sure. You know? No, and that's sure. why we went back in this past year and, and the year prior to that. With, with some occasional matches with the Lord of the Rings, some different events yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. Because, you know, it, it always, you know, it's amazing how far you can go to come back where you started kind of yeah. thing. And it's always nice when the door opens and you can go back in. And, and it's kind of like walking into your old elementary school and looking around 20 years down the road and seeing, oh, man, that's exactly the way it was back whenever I was there. Yeah. And then, you know, things have changed, but it's still kind of the same. You know, it's yeah. a weird feeling. Oh. But, you know, you got to go in there, you know, do some things, kind of, Scratch that itch, so to speak, and then go off and get back out on the road and do yeah, your own thing. Do your own thing, yeah. yeah. But it, and it was it's true because I know we did the the Karakoff Classic Tag Classic, and then uh, the, right. the, the Lord. And of I had the pleasure of winning the NWL Championship and a Heavyweight Championship again, which it had been. Yeah, I guess two. Uh, Lance, I don't want you. Happy birthday, Lance! <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> That young man. Well, that son of a he's bitch. Gonna be, he's he's the man. <laughs> one of the greatest things just to break KV where the <laughs> we're we're doing the show and I think it may have been at 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 the House of Pain, but it was a it was a it was a paid show and um so there was guys in there, you know, getting the physicals and stuff like that with the doctor. <laughs> the people were just packed in the locker room. I mean literally. Yeah. Gear bags everywhere and like you can't even see the floor and people were sitting around like this and we're all just laughing and joking and telling stories. And the doctor's like cramped right there, and guys are running in place to do part of their physical, get their blood pressure, and all this. And he's looking in Lance's eyes, <laughs> and then all you hear from across the room is Lance's husband. You better not look too long, uh, Doc. You'll get lost in them, some bitches. And <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah, it's laughs> hey, you're welcome for the finish of the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> <laughs> Well, <laughs> it's the truth. But no, he, <laughs> is it not the truth? Then, but is it the truth? Is it not the truth? Yeah, yeah, I gave the yeah. There's a, I mean, <laughs> and Lance, Lance is a kid, obviously, the, you know, the son of of, uh, of Samu, who is a mentor to us and such a cool guy. But Lance is so talented of a kid. Yeah. He's going to be on TV one of these days. And it's cool to get to see somebody from eight or nine years old that was, you know, we were wrestling around with, just having fun with. Yeah. We were wrestling Samu that night in some hardcore match. To seeing him now, where he's all over the place from yeah. New York. And it, it, down and it does make you feel old. Though. Yeah. <laughs> like, it does. Like, why do you drink now, huh? <laughs> Son of a bitch. So, um, I guess we're we're starting to run out of time here, but I wanted to just oh, touch, <laughs> touch base with you guys. Um, uh, we have a few things coming up this this year. Um, wasn't sure how much of that we want to get up off of right now, but at the same time, I was like, what's the harm and and and. I'm mostly just sitting on my couch. I don't know. I'm not sure what you guys got going on. Yeah, this guy just pulls the rug out from under the Elite Pro Wrestling Alliance and all of its fans. (laughs) Pay this man his money and I will come back. (laughs) (laughs) Because he's never gotten paid. No, I'm just saying. March 24th. Um, Bless you, Gail. March you gotta start the whole thing over now. Uh, <laughs> Fucking Gales. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so, That's all right. She just finished her first beer. 
<laughs> you guys may know Gail Davis. She is the person that runs the ticket booth. Have you ever been to an Elite Pro show? She's been to every single one and has been sitting here for an hour and a half, totally silent, so no one knows she's here. The no, only no, person no, not totally. <laughs> 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 the only person you'll ever meet that always has a smile on it. <laughs> so, um, that all said, uh, March 24th, we had a pretty cool announcement. We have uh, uh, somebody special coming in uh, for our March 24th show. Right here. Did you already hear him? I, I heard, but I don't want to spoil it. You yeah, yeah. You. Um, Al Snow will be coming in and, and uh, wrestling uh, at uh, the Elite Pro Show on March 24th. The uh, location to be, uh, to be announced here very soon. And uh, tickets will go on sale for that actually next Friday. What I do know is that uh, Al will have a very limited amount of time that he's at the event. He's obviously signed to wrestle. And he will be appearing for the intermission. But we're going to have to do some, uh, we'll do some VIP passes to get a, uh, an autograph picture combo with him. Um, that will be the only way to guarantee that you have that opportunity to, to get in the ring, get a picture with him, and meet him. So um, uh, they'll be... As with everything, I think we do incredibly reasonably priced. Yeah, yeah. you know. And, but, I, and and just real quick, I mean, I'm a huge fan of this guy. He was a guy kind of reinvented himself at ECW right yeah. as ECW was taken off, and then became a part of the Attitude Era, and now is one of the most influential men. It has been. He's. You talked about um, Tom Pritchard and John yeah. Cena before. How many people have sat under Al Snow's learning tree in the last... Absolutely. I mean, being tied into the... Not only the Tough Enough show on the air, but but being in the developmentals and all this... I mean, being a trainer for so many years. I mean, he's a guy that knows exactly the knowledge you need to gain to get where you want to go. So so it's uh, it's a great opportunity. I did a show with him years ago in Cranberry, Pennsylvania, and it was just... Did you make that place up? No, no. Is this place called Cranberry? Cranberry, Pennsylvania. It's true. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry to say it's over close to Pittsburgh. It's a true story, but uh, but anyway, it was just a fantastic opportunity. Oh, um, and uh, cranberry's not real. It is so real. You're a fountain of life. Ocean spray. But anyway, uh, but anyway, <laughs> so we're winning. You reek of deceit. <laughs> cranberry. I smell of wanting pizza. But anyway, um, truthfully though, I, I mean, he was just the coolest guy in the world, and. Um, we did see him um, kind of undress John Balsamo in a <laughs> locker room one time after his match. And I don't mean physically, folks. I mean, explain to him just how bad he was at everything he did. <laughs> and in all That's terms, one thing. Much like Tommy Dreamer, uh, Al Snow's a guy that if you ask him to watch a, your match or ask his wanna, opinion on something you did, yeah. you better be ready for and, the answer and, because he will yeah. not pull punches. And Balsamo wrestled him. And... In all fairness to Balsamo, he'd only been wrestling for about 12 years. <laughs> and, and as I watched this uncomfortable exchange of how from the time you walked out of the locker room to the time you walked back into the locker room, everything was very bad. I realized... Because he wrestled him, did he? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I realized I was spot on on my opinion of Balsamo's wrestling ability from day one. <laughs> I was like, I may not ever be on WWE TV, but I knew that guy was shitty. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Am I wrong? You remember the Rock and Roll Express? You were there. Oh, I know. You were there. I remember. You were his partner. Yeah, I know. Don't put Leatherman with him. Why not? Yeah, don't put Leatherman with Jake. That would make too much sense. <laughs> Let's put him with Balsamo and give Balsamo a Highwayman shirt. <laughs> Was am I wrong? No, no, it was no. fucking horrible. The, the best you know what happened when we wrestled when we wrestled Rock Roll Express? It was fucking awesome. <laughs> you know what happened whenever he and I worked Rock Roll Express? It was fucking horrible. Ricky, Ricky thanked me for the match and then said, you, "Can you excuse us for a second? I walked around the corner and then I stood there and listened to them berate him on doing everything wrong. Yes, and you know what happened nine years later? Al Snow did the same thing. <laughs> That turned into a roast of John Balsamo. It's not a roast. It's a name I haven't heard from probably. It's a fucking fact of life. I don't even dislike him. You <laughs> did though. He would come. He would come in there all one second. He said, "Swear to God." He would walk over and he would he would start fucking talking to us. Jake would go, "Would you go stand over there, please?" He <laughs> said, "Not in the of a lion." He would tell him, go stand somewhere else. That was less tolerant. He would go. He would go. <laughs> 
cranberry was alive. <laughs> you really blossomed. <laughs> you really blossomed. <laughs> oh. oh my. Uh, you need people like us to call us hell to learn bullshit. Uh. <laughs> we, we, we know each other. We take it away with anything. <laughs> Cranberry. <laughs> the cranberry. I don't even try that. Hey, I've lost 10 pounds shit anymore. <laughs> yeah, this guy gave me that spiel about DDP yoga. Uh, yeah, Come on, man. Hey, it does work. Unfortunately, you gotta keep doing it. <laughs> you stop doing it, shit goes bad. <laughs> I'm still waiting for my coffee. Oh, that. Well, no. Okay, so. Um, we also have um, our. Nine year anniversary show nice. coming up June the 30th, and that will be Rogers versus Highway. Oh, no, that's not a shit storm. <laughs> <laughs> that? that was a fucking mistake. Oh. June 30th, <clears throat> that's my birthday. I'll be 47. 47? On well, June 30th. Holy mackerel. Holy you don't even have any gray hair. It's so weird. I got gray hair. It's all I over the place. I do gray hair, but it's blonde. You didn't wait till these look that shit. <laughs> on the black and white video, we'll be able to see it perfectly. Man, I'm getting gray over the All day. the girls in the locker room are like... <laughs> 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 fucking man, really? <laughs> right? It's like, God damn. Especially the fact that you'll put... You'll get about half-dressed and then you'll roam around backstage That's not for like true. an hour. That is not true. And just walk by and just join the circle of conversation in the hallway by catering. And he's got like... Half his singlet on, and he's got like one boot That's, on. And he's just yeah, the boot, there, the he's, boot thing is he's true. He's just standing there, kind of talking with everybody. He's like, "All right, guys, well, I'm gonna go finish getting dressed. Give a slap on the shoulder, and walk away." People were like, "Not in front of the ladies. I do not do that in front of the ladies. Okay, not in front of the ladies, but boy, all the guys really tried to endure it over the years." <laughs> you know, are you trying to find pictures of it? No. <laughs> 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 No, okay. not at all. Okay, well, whatever. But, uh, <laughs> I just but yes, for the for the first time uh, with the anniversary show, nine year anniversary show. Yes, um, we'll be at. Uh, it looks like we're going to be. We'll be either at Kaiser High School or we'll be at Frankfurt High School. Those are the details we're still working out. But uh, it's going to be for the nine year anniversary show. We're going to be uh, bringing back war games for the third time. Two rings, two cages. Probably two teams of four or five. There's been a few different variations of it over the years, but they have proved to be bloodbaths. Yeah, yeah. So if you're if you uh, if you're a fan of war games, if you're a fan of elite, you're gonna definitely want to be there. Plus nine years and forty-seven. Not to Barry Horowitz it, but nine years is awesome. Yeah, yeah. nine years of good stuff. And, right? and, and a Rich. ton of shows in those nine years. I mean, you know. Some people will say they've been doing it nine years and they got, you know, 30 shows. Yeah. Like, like the guys that say, I've been wrestling for 10 years and they've wrestled yeah. 14 that, matches. Yeah. That's, that's my favorite Arn Anderson quote. Tell me how, many, how long you've been wrestling in matches, not years, you know. And, yeah. And that's true. And I think that you can say that for leagues. That doesn't so count true. training matches, everyone. If you're doing it in the training center in front of no one, uh, that doesn't count as a match. I'm just yeah. saying. One day we're going to sit down and do the list of all the, all the, the, the worldwide recognized talent. With Hacksaw Jim Duggan and the Patriot and Sanjay Dunn and Ric Flair and Terry Funk and Matt Hardy and Kurt Angle and Gangrel and what Luke Gallows. What Gallows. a Mizark. Well, name dropping some bitch. Except we we brought him here. <laughs> I don't know if that's a name drop. Yeah. <laughs> Let's start with a list of that names that Leslie Leatherman's wrestled in Elite Pro. He just that, did. That, that just did. Yeah, <laughs> that that list is, is, is pretty far gone, so... But but on that same note, let's put a pin in Leatherman. That opens up a whole lot of opportunity because there's a reason this guy has wrestled all those people. That's where you guys need to be because everybody's kind of in this area. And then you had Leatherman here. That's why he was that guy that, that was put in that position. And you know I'm what? I'm gonna need a copy of this. <laughs> he just complimented me. <laughs> I'd like to have a copy of it, please. But <laughs> hey, hey, and you you have uh, Leslie Leatherman no longer on the active roster. And you also have Shorty Smalls, no longer on the active time, roster. Yeah. yeah, so there's... Dalton Hayes, why is he on the active roster? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they could go for R.L. Smith and T.J. Sykes, and R.L. Smith has all the titles. Reggie Collins right. and T.J. Right. Right. Sykes, like, I, seriously, it doesn't matter who stole whose chair from under the ring or who had a really bad dog collar match. Hey, wait, matters. wait, dude, dude, come on, everybody knows dog collars matches about all sorts of weapons. <laughs> <laughs> 
Hold on. I'm, I'm, not, use the I'm not done. I'm not done. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Why would you use the second chain? <laughs> hey, are you sure? No, you know what that is? That's crickets. You know why? Shit ain't funny. <laughs> Nimmons. Well, you killed the elite for a career of two wrestlers. Well, use your chair, really? Why would you use my chair? So I just fucking spent like thirty dollars on thirty chairs. <laughs> well, ours is a little further in there. You can just reach in and get ours. Yeah, we like, reach it. Really. <laughs> Because climbing on the rings is my bag, baby. <laughs> I'm known for my fucking skills of being like a fucking cat burglar and crawling into shit. Yeah. Oh. What well, happened up the fucking vents earlier? What the fuck is wrong with you? What the hell? So real. We can get some more beers. Can you yeah, we'll grab some. some. <laughs> well, while you're doing that, I would like to elaborate. Now look, boys. Now look, I am not. <laughs> You guys fucking up that shit. <laughs> you know, Rats and I are killing each other out there. You know why? Because you guys made us have to fucking kill each other. You just stole the fucking gimmicks. It's a fucking dog collar match. You know what you do in a dog collar match? Dale, if you were in a dog collar match, what weapon would you use? Say the dog oh, collar. Oh the dog collar. <laughs> I didn't have to tell her. She said it before. You know how many dog collar matches Dale has been in? None. She knows more about psychology of wrestling than you fucking guys do. <laughs> I'm, not trying, I'm not trying to be a dick. <laughs> really? What happened? I don't think he's are. trying. What I'm saying is I'm not trying. <laughs> <laughs> it just naturally happened. Hey, I'm retired. What are you going to do? Beat me up? <laughs> we can do not use you anymore. <laughs> You know, many, first, you know I, I love I love Nimmons. You know how many times I've had over the years. <laughs> <laughs> I love TJ Sykes. I think I think honestly they just wanted to do something spectacular, and what they did was not do something spectacular, <laughs> and then make it hard for us to do something spectacular. <laughs> but you know what we did? Something spectacular. <laughs> And uh, I didn't walk for about a week straight up after that, but in all fairness to me, it was just because they fucked our shit up. Uh, <laughs> Are you I, done? Well, I just, I just remember there was all those thumbtacks, and he's like, let's take it home. I was like, I think you better put me in them one more time. <laughs> like, God damn it. So I said, reverse me, man. You've heard that. <laughs> so it, it's, it's we been just throwing it out the window tonight, huh? It's been close to three months since we've done a podcast. Yeah. We're coming back with a video one, guys. I'm thinking we need to start doing this a little more often. A little more I would like to. You I know like the, the, the video podcast is great because it really gets people into the moment. I understand the stories. and I mean, because there's been so many great stories, most of which have come from you just because of your storytelling ability. Just ask Tim Walker. Leslie Leatherman is one of the best storytellers there is, period. Uh, vocally or in the ring. But... Uh, I was but, thinking, but also I'm the t- guests and stuff too. I mean, yeah. you know, and we're going to kick it off and do it semi regularly to where you know there'd be guests involved because I think that was a good feedback. And, and I'll tell you too, I, I would like to get to some point where, like, if we were going to have them, we're like, I, I'm not saying I want to make it a question and answer session, but it would be nice to have a couple of those, like, hey, we got this question from this person or this question from that person. Yeah. I think that'd be kind yeah, of yeah. Yeah, the, the the plan would be to, to just, live stream to where it could be sent in. Just send live. it in and then you I mean just hit us off the Because cover My favorite it. thing to do in wrestling behind the scenes is to answer questions on the fly. Much like my wrestling. I that's, and that's how I, I love like to work. knowing that's how I love anything to work. about yeah. what's gonna happen. Yeah. I like going out there and and I mean because we've worked so many shows over the years where when you showed up to the building you had no idea who you were wrestling. Right. I knew that I was booked and that was it. Other than that, I, I assumed it was going to be last. Right. Or yeah. the, the main event or semi-main event. Because, you know, a lot of times it was yeah. either we were the main event or we were you were a champion and we were the tag team champions or you were the heavyweight champion and we were wrestling, whatever it was. But Or at one time he had the tag team champions and the heavyweight championship and I was like, wow, well, fuck that. <laughs> and get this, but, his partner was fucking hijinks. <laughs> Apparently, Dalton Hayes was booked. <laughs> but I did it. But I bet Amy Rose was in the crowd watching the hijinks match. But anyway. Yeah, Amy Rose caught up. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, Amy there, Rose. There's, there's, not, there's nothing better than, than showing up to a building not knowing who you're working 
or it getting changed last second, going out to the ring, or being booked up against a guy, finding out when you get there, and then go to the ring and not know anything about what you want to do, and then you have to figure it out. Like, yeah. there's, we, not, we, there's we, nothing yeah. harder than whenever you have I'm people that have their plan on their game plan, you know, three months in advance. Well, in, in the immortal words of Mike Tyson, <laughs> You know, everybody's, everybody's got, got a game plan to get punched in the face. I, I'm going to tell you right now, that, that was, anybody that ever shits on House of Pain or John or anything like that, man, we, this learning environment that we had was so unique and it was so incredible because you learned how to go out there and to wrestle in just about any situation that would come up. And you learned how to go out there and to call on the fly, you learned how to go out there and have a match with a crowd four feet in front of you and you know they're surrounding you so if you're talking they're hearing and we were you could go they out there weren't and shy do, about calling you, you know, either you could go out there on Friday night and do a barbed bar wire match you could go out there on Saturday night right after that and do a match with the Rock and Roll Express and, and have a technical did match that. then you could go out there and have a singles match that was 45 minutes long against a guy on Sunday afternoon like, so, that's the way that's what you learn there and a lot of places you go and, and you basically want to write you know, your own story. And, yeah, it's and funny things. because it, I, I kind of had to learn how to re-wrestle like some of the younger guys because that's the environment that that they were in now. Right. Da, ba, da, ba, da, ba, da, ba, da. And I was like, eh, all right, I'll, I mean, if you want to do that, that's fine. And then half of you forgot your shit. But I just, but that's, <laughs> and, you know, and, then, and, then you, and then you know what happened? Me knowing how to fucking wrestle <laughs> Still made you look like a fucking million dollars. And I put most of you over, you motherfucker. <laughs> well, uh, on that note... Leatherman rough. has completely let everything go out the window after his retirement. <laughs> well, before we close, I was thinking, the 90th anniversary show is right around the corner here. Oh, another beer. Um, <laughs> I thought of you guys, one or two, I was going to say, especially because I'd say we're, we're the front office. At the end of the day, we're the front office. You guys are. I appreciate it. I, no, I, I, no, I'm no, about it. no, yeah. <laughs> What I'm saying is, train Bodie. <laughs> so if you make money off a of Bodie, I'll, I'll and, and I'm not saying anything specifically that that, that if you make money off Bodie, <laughs> I was just thinking one or two moments in Elite over the last, and maybe not that you're directly involved with, but just one or two memorable things. I'm not putting anybody else over. over <laughs> just what? What do you remember? Even stepping back, kind of as a fan of it all, nine years. What do you remember? Like something that stands out that that was a big moment. The one that popped in my head when I thought of that was that freaking promo you caught on Shane Douglas. <laughs> he had people. It was classic. Yeah, it was you awesome. You know why? Because it was true. Yeah. You, you know, I, I'll, that's, I'll, that's, I'll, a, I'll, I'll, that's the lost art. You were talking. You mentioned earlier about about a lost art and, and talking about you know the the way to work and stuff like that. Well, taking truth and amplifying it and being able to talk because you're speaking for the heart. That is the lost art because so many guys, uh, every roster you go anywhere, it doesn't matter where it is, and TV included, guys have no idea how to talk and get their point across unless somebody's got it on a piece of paper for them or it's just completely lost in translation and you're sitting there like, he's been talking for five minutes I don't have a damn idea what the hell he's talking about. But then whenever you went out with Shane Douglas, it's like you immediately... Made everybody feel for you, but at the same time hate your guts. Yeah. And killer. nobody could figure out why. <laughs> you felt probably the best, probably the single best promo. Jen, of Jen the came, uh, Tate came up to me. Um, I remember that there there was an incident that happened earlier in the first match. Guy got hurt. It delayed the show. You know, you got to pay by the hour for these buildings. Um, but the show was running long because of this, and this true life injury took a little bit of the wind out of the crowd. But. <laughs> The thing with Douglas and I got amplified from just a match to an Extreme Rules match. You know what I mean? It just to, to try to add to the fact that we lost Mr. Anderson. And I won't bore everybody. But I remember I was like, man, I really want to cut this promo. And I, I got an idea for it. But I don't want to fuck these guys over. Because it's like, man, we got to kind of squeeze things together. Because we got to get... And I remember, I remember when it was over. And I was sitting there in the back. And um, two great compliments that I had. First one was, he came back to me. And, um, and I was like, I'm sorry, I, I rambled a little bit out there. I hope I didn't run this too long. And he looked at me and he said, that was the greatest fucking promo I've ever heard in my life. And I said, well, how are we doing on time? He goes, I don't give a shit. That was the greatest fucking promo I ever did in my life. Which meant that if we got to spend more money for the building because you cut that promo, it was worth it. 
And then I watched it with a commentary, and he was doing the commentary. And uh, he was always kind of my gauge, because I always, I, to this day, think Jake is the best wrestler I've ever been in the ring with. And, and he was, uh, you know, when I could pop Jake, then I knew. And uh, when I pop, I could tell that I popped him from his commentating, and I was like, that was just, that was fine. That was good. That's all I needed. So you two guys, that night, to me, I thank you for bringing that up, but... You guys, I well, you thank him. I that, almost said it. That, 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 <laughs> like, I thank you for bringing that. Up. Well, I said thank you guys. What he elaborated <laughs> to, and, and, uh, <laughs> but anyway, but anyway. So I appreciate you guys mentioning that. But but anyway, but but popping you guys, and anytime you pop your promoters, at the end of the day, if Leatherman would have been shitty, you'd been like, dude, we need to get the fuck out of there. <laughs> and then you'd have been like, what are you gonna do? Not use them anymore? You're like, dude, you just cut, you just fucking Brandon Scott in it out. What the fuck happened? <laughs> Like that time Shorty retired and he grabbed the mic and used it to cut a promo on another promoter. <laughs> Thanks. That was an it's like, that was weird. In like 60 seconds we talked about the greatest promo in the history of Elite and the worst <laughs> one. Yeah. In the words of the kid, that's a shoot hoot. <laughs> but I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you, for me though, for, for me, it, um, I, I think, you know, uh, just... You know, all of those shows, but I'll tell you what popped me was we did the big time wrestling show, the collaboration, and it was huge, but the ticket prices were, were big time wrestling set that yeah. thing. When we came back, and, and I say we loosely because it's you, when we came back with fucking Kurt Angle, and you guys were able to set like $12 ticket prices, $5 ticket prices, and then we had Kurt Angle, and just to let everybody know, Kurt Angle came in. Because Rhino said, you got to come down and work with these guys. And yeah. So Kurt Angle came in, and he did that spot. And I had not wrestled. I did the War Games thing, but I had not wrestled, wrestled in three years. And that was, to me, that was probably, it was ridiculous. There's Kurt Angle. There's Rhino. I mean, Robbie. I mean, it was just, that whole night, the crowd was fit. You, I knew you were there. <laughs> the The crowd was fantastic, and, the, and you guys. And what I, it was one of those things where I was like, Man, that big time wrestling shit was great. And I was like, Fuck big time wrestling, really fucking big time wrestling. And the funny thing is, and that's not an insult to big time wrestling because the big time wrestling guys more or less were like, you guys don't need us. I mean, they they knew yeah. they they knew that. Yeah, they knew that there was something special. That ring announcer said. You know, yeah, because they were on a tour of five shows that week, and he told me on the last show, because they rented our ring for every show, he told me on the last show, he said, that was the best, that your guy's show was the best one we've had this year. Forget the tour, this year. So that was the best crowd we've had. Yeah. And that's nothing against those guys. I mean, they obviously no, no, bring I a lot mean, to the table. I, you know. mean it, I mean it as a compliment, sure. because basically what happened was, that, that current angle show to me, that was just absolutely... Priceless. I mean, I think it was a five-year anniversary show. Yeah, it was. And, I mean, it was ridiculous to think about bringing in Rhino, Kurt Angle. I think the Patriot was on Sanjay the show. Sanjay was there. Uh, San, yeah. Sanjay. No, uh, Shane, no, Shane Douglas. Shane Douglas, was Sanjay. Shane, du Shane Douglas, Sanjay, Rhino, and Kurt Angle. And our fans got to pay 12 bucks to see that. And if yeah. they wanted to do a meet and greet, it was a little bit more. Right. But it was still better than if you had to go to a big city to see it. Oh, you know, for sure. Or something like that. Well, and, and I looked at that, too, as when we, and not to get too long-winded about it, when we did the Big Time Wrestling Show, the front row of that was $50. Second row was 40 I think third, fourth, and fifth row were 35 or something. I mean, I don't think a kid could go in there for less than 20 Right. And I had people because just, and again, I'm not criticizing their structure. When you got Ric Flair, Terry Funk, Matt Hardy, Mickey Carlito, James, Mickey uh, James, Luke Chris Gallagher, Masters. Luke Gallagher. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, you have a ridiculous amount of talent there. It, that's not cheap. I mean, the number, it was tens of thousands of dollars to put that show on. And so, But I had I had uh, a family that came up, and they were happy. But they said, yeah, we, we were like, well, are we going to go on vacation or are we coming to the show? And we decided to take our $900 to come to the show, and we were so glad we did. And I mean, I just felt horrible about it. They were happy, but I felt bad that... That it costs that kind of money for a family of five to I come agree. to a show. I agree. And so we just made the conscious decision the next year that hey, we're going to do something big, and when we do it, we're gonna we're gonna make sure that the price point is where it is. And we did. And I we don't were, know. If, I don't know. Gail Gail was there. We were we were working the Ric Flair line when doing the pictures, and I don't know if you remember this or not. But I'm not saying this to put myself over. 
I'm just really because that's kind of in the trend. This no, season. but I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of extending your point. There was a it was X amount of dollars to get your picture taken with Rick, and I don't know if Rick get all Rick can get. Rick's Rick. Rick. This guy came through the line, and he did not have enough money to pay to get a picture with Rick because he paid for his son to come through, and he needed like another. I I ended up handing this guy like ten bucks so that he could go through the line. Do you remember that? I don't know if you recall that or not. So that he could go through the line and get his picture with Ric Flair because he was a guy that was probably close to my age at the time, about forty years old. And he was like Rick's my. I was like, he's like he's my hero. I was like, I get it. He's my hero. I get it. He's my hero too. Yeah. You know? That's why I can walk. You know, he's, he's, he's my hero. You know, that's why I do this. <laughs> but it was just one of those things, and and it was cool. But at the same time, I know what you're saying. People don't understand our depressed area, and I won't bore people to death, but. What we did in that Kurt Angle show, what you guys did at that Kurt Angle show, was you guys brought incredible talent. I mean, you know, Rhino is still on TV today. Kurt Angle was the general manager of Monday Night Raw and just got ducked in the Hall of Fame last year. And, you know, I mean, Shane Douglas was the guy that ECW was created on. And Sanjay Dutt, he, is he still a title holder in TNA, or is he? I mean, yeah, and I mean, he's, a, he's a booker, and he's their overseas I mean, guy. I mean, and... I mean, think about that. These these are four just and I was like, man, twelve bucks. I mean, how a movie costs twelve dollars now? And they put a, they put a little thing in um, in Pro Wrestling Illustrated about it because I'd sent I'd sent a fairly big and bloated article which they whittled down <laughs> to be about three sentences, but it was the idea that if independent professional wrestling is done properly. You can have Shane Douglas, Kurt Angle, Sanjay Dutt, and Rhino on an indie show for twelve dollars and not lose your ass. Yeah, and and and, that, and that's and, and I like, real quick then I'll let you guys. That's an extension of how you guys do business though, because Kurt Angle showed up. I won't talk business. He showed up for the price that he showed up because of Rhino and because how how you guys treat Rhino. Yeah, and, and because well, Rhino was just so happy with and you know the why way he was treated. He, and he did show up for that reason. But I'll tell you this. Kurt Angle called me uh, probably six times from the time we booked him, which was four months out, till the day of the show. He called me six different times. When he got injured and they announced it on TNA that his knee was messed up, he called me that day that he had had surgery to say, I didn't want you to worry. I'm still going to be there. He could not have been more of a class It wasn't, it wasn't a middleman guy that he had called on his yeah. behalf. And, like, he's very personable. And then when he showed up there, like nobody said a word about, like, he had his own. We, you know, he had his own thing. He was doing, you know, being the referee in our match, but he chose to watch every match every and give match. feedback. When, when people came back through the curtain, like he legit, because we had the monitor backstage and all that, he sat in the grill area and watched every match. And then when guys came back, he offered his opinions and, and feedback and stuff, whether they asked for it or not. Like right. he would just tell them, and it was like. Who does that? Like, I know. It not was, a lot of people amazing. will do that. Like, there's a lot of guys, Tommy Dreamer and Al Snow, and all these different guys, and Shane Douglas, and, and different people that, it, and, and, and the Patriot and guys, if you say, would you watch my match? They'll watch your match, and they'll yeah. give you feedback, and they'll help you out, because there's a lot of awesome guys out there, but very few people take the initiative to say, you know what, I'm probably the best of all time in ring. A handful of three, maybe, can argue. Doesn't matter. He's in the he's in the but conversation for sure. You know what I'm going to do on this first indie show that I've ever done? I'm going to go over and watch every match and then tell them what they're doing good, what they're doing bad, and and make them feel good if they do something good, and and make them work harder if they do something bad, and and not be a jerk about it. Like, yeah. I mean, he may have eaten all the chicken skewers at catering, sure. But and he also <laughs> offered man. everything you know his knowledge to everybody. And he may have terrified me. But uh, but you kind of deserved it. Yeah, you kind of touched it. Well, you know what? In the, in the ring. Oh, you know, I was I was. But no, hey, you want to talk about about promos? We we're talking about the Shane Douglas promo. That promo in the ring with you and I and, and Kurt was was one of my favorite moments because that was pretty awesome. When it was, you, it was, when you said it's true, Kurt, and you kind of gave him a little tap on the shoulder, and he uh, looked <laughs> looked at your hand and then looked back at you, and, and just, just and, so and, and, so and it was like Jerry Mitchell from Three O'clock High. Your hand yeah. just kind of slided off his shoulder, <laughs> and you got back to the back and went. Why didn't I touch you? I'll just, I'll just, I'll, I will never forget that to the day that I die. I'll never forget being going. I went, it's true, Kurt. I reached out, I put my hand on his shoulder, and he just went. <laughs> and his eyes, all he did, he looked at my hand, looked at me, and I went. <laughs> now, and, and I and, just kind and of. Pre- because the only person that was as close to Angle at the time as you 
was me. Well, he was pretty close and, too. Yeah, I was like, like, and, I was like and, 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 and I was like, it's not, I was like the three most man. It's, it's not the fact. <laughs> it's, it's not the fact that his eyes were so wide open because, but it was whenever he's looking. And then he looks down, and then he looks back, and he didn't blink in any of them motions. Well, I, mean, just I didn't see him blink the whole time. For oh, any of you listening, look one direction, then change the direction with your eyes, and then change it back, and don't blink. Yeah, that's weird. The man had a leg brace on that went from his ankle to his upper thigh, yeah. and it was still like, please don't piss him off. All I know <laughs> is is that he went like this. He went, and I heard you, fat fuck. <laughs> And, and, this, and this is, I swear to God, this, this is the truth. We rolled, I, I got out of range. I got out of range. We went into intermission, and he goes, like, to his table, like, for intermission, like, to, to do, to do, dinner, to do some gimmicks. I go back through the curtain, and all the boys are popping for me, like, coming back through, going, he said it's true, I'm just like, move, go, move. And I hit the rest of the night. I hit for me the rest of the night. It was I so bad. I got back, back with you, you turned, looked at me and went, I have got to get the fuck out and of I'm here. And I'm just like, I'm like, man, you know. And, and at, at the end of the night, and I'll let Jake tell this, the story if he wants to. At the end of the night, Kurt Angle told Jake, he said, I need to talk to you for a moment. And they went into and the way that the Frankfurt is. It's like there's a, there's a hallway, there's the locker rooms, and then there's a, a weight room. And that weight room there was where I believe that he wanted to to talk to Jake to have some privacy. I swear to God, I thought that he was going to be so pissed about that. Like I really did. I swear. Like, <laughs> I, I really did. I think I've told you this before. I don't know if you're caught up, but I really did think like. This is what, but he had a very nice conversation with you, yeah, where he basically like the end was really. It, it was really nice, but I really did. I thought, I thought he was going to be. I, I swear, like in my mind, he's like, Me, that fucker ever <laughs> puts his sausage fingers on my <laughs> shoulder again. I'm going to beat the fuck out of him. And you tell him right now, and I, I can still hear him breathing because I was blown up, you know. But anyway. But yeah, it was uh, it was cool. I, I, I Deuce goes, you said it's true. I think Kurt Angle was like, you gotta fucking move. I'm so scared. <laughs> I, I thought I was gonna get beat up by Kurt Angle. <laughs> it was classic. And, and, well, I remember and, that, ma- that match. And too. believe me, he's got the tools to do it. <laughs> well, <laughs> and, and that match is whenever I, I tore, I had a small tear in my oh, bicep, God. but then I had neck dam- uh, nerve damage in my neck, and Robbie did a poncho on top of me yes. on the floor. And then it, uh, things just shut down. I couldn't move my left yeah. arm at all, and my neck was like kinked to the side. And I, I couldn't. I had numbness all over. I couldn't do shit. And then I'm, I'm on the apron, and then you basically take the reins and work a majority of the match. And I, I remember being there, and I'm trying to like figure in my head. You know how it is when you get injured yeah. in a match. Like, okay, well, I know there's things that are wrong, but we have to get here. Mm-hmm. Like, so you can't stop running the race. And it sucks, but so I'm 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 here like on the apron. I'm still on a knee in the corner, and you're wrestling with Robbie in the ring and exchanging back and forth between Brian and Robbie. And I'm I'm here like looking. I got one knee up, and I got my arm like this on my, and I can't move my arm at all. And it felt like everything just peeled back, like somebody just tore it right off the bone. And I'm I'm here like this, and it ended up being a small tear, but it was a, the nerve damage that is that made everything numb and not work. And I, I remember just leaning there, and I'm thinking. This really sucks, and I got to figure out how how, how am I going to do anything it's else. It's five year anniversary. Yeah, show, well, it's a five year anniversary show. You got Rhino across the ring from you, and you got Kurt Angle there. Yeah. The last thing you want to do is disappoint the fans, disappoint them, make it look like you don't know what you're doing, make it look like right. whatever. So I'm standing here like this. Kurt's the the special ring enforcer on the floor, outside the ring, and so he's on the far side, like in a neutral corner. He walks all the way around because he, I guess he put together that right. it was obvious yeah. there was an injury. I'm still leaning there and I'm looking in the ring and all of a sudden he appears right here. Puts his hand like on, on the side of my thigh and, and, and on my calf muscle. And I looked down and he went, are you alright? What happened to your arm? And I went, I think I tore my bicep. I'm not sure. I can't move my arm at all. And he went, God bless you, son. Be careful. And he just turned around and walked away. <laughs> and I was like, huh. <laughs> and I was like, 
I remember I'm the bad uh, guy. I remember we talked uh, shit to each other earlier. I remember, Aren't I, you supposed to not talk to me? I, I but remember, he's totally oblivious. Like his main focus was that I have to go check on this guy that uh, may be injured because you know he's been there and he knows what it's like. And not to cut you guys off, but we're about to run out of time right, here. Right. Sure. So um, we will be uh, again. We'll be in Frankfurt this Saturday night, uh, day after tomorrow. Uh, we'll be in Frankfurt. Uh, the doors open at six fifteen. The show starts. Are also defended both titles. Both titles. Jake August. Machine Davis and Shane Malice becoming the new Elite Pro Wrestling Alliance Tag Team Champions. Jake the Machine Davis and Shane Malice being sorely disappointed when myself and Reggie Collins successfully defend the tag team titles. Where will the belts be? Will the shelf be empty? I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to take a bit. You know what? If something happens and we lose those belts, I'm going to be standing by that shelf with just a sad face. I've got a picture of the belts on the shelf if anybody wants it. It's going to happen. (laughs) Belts on the shelf. (laughs) Belts on the shelf. All right, then. Ladies ladies, ladies tag team match. Great match. Anthony Adam, Bodie Williams. Yep. Get your tickets at 301-697-1909 or facebook.com slash Elite Pro Universe. Or at the comic book store, which is... Calling All Heroes Comics at 50 Stately Street in Wiley Ford, West Virginia, but they're only there tomorrow. Tomorrow. Um, tomorrow's the last day to get them. It's Give Friday. us a call. That's the quickest and easiest way. 301 697 1909. Call us. Get your tickets. Doors open 6 15, bell time 7 o'clock. And there will be tickets available at the door if anybody. Yes. So make sure you there do will that. Be. I'm just saying. I'm wondering right now. More shameless self promotion. So we'll see you guys uh, hopefully sooner than later. Won't yes. be another three months. Be there. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> yeah. <laughs>